41.9 there. And 45, 255 with the MK46. Now let's go over the character sheet first and foremost. As you can see, 52% all weapon damage bonus, followed by 65% LMG damage bonus for a total of, and I was wrong on the thumbnail again. No, it's not 116.5% weapon damage, but it's 117% weapon damage. <laughs> You also got to keep in mind it all depends on personal preferences when it comes uh, to the talents uh, that are on pieces in question. But if you happen to be new to the channel or you're just enjoying the content, then ground and pound, show some love to that like button, and then also smash that sub button if you happen to be new. Appreciate each and every one of you. We are well on our way to 12k. So let's hop into the build itself. This is pure PvE. And these are the exceptions. You don't have to use concussion. Uh, I put it on there more or less for extra damage. Um, you can go with the likes of hazard protection, empowered if you want more skill power, the sky's the limit, whatever your choice. Also, if you don't want the one piece uh, Badger Tough uh, bonus, which gives you 7% damage to elites, which puts this build at 100% um, damage to elites, then you can easily switch out uh, for Hildegard pieces with any talent you so choose, whether it be cloaked, empowered, insulated. Um, patience would be good on this one. Um, it just more or less all depends on more what you're going for and what is your personal playstyle. But, you know, um, I'm more or less a, a DPS when it comes to the likes of PvE, and this you get tons and tons of DPS from. So let's start with the main components, and that is the two-piece of the Gila Guard, and then followed by the two-piece of Troop Patriot, one-piece Petrov, and then this is more or less a filler piece. You can go with the third piece of Troop Patriot to get the red, white, and blue debuff, or you can switch out to any knee pads with whatever talents you so choose. It's just the Badger Tough one piece does give you an offensive mod slot with two defensive attributes, and that way you can have percentage armor and a number-based value of armor, and depending on what pieces you have, then you can uh, your stats will reflect that as far as when it comes to your toughness, your armor, and your health-wise. Um, the third piece of True Patriot or True Patriot knee pads will come with an offensive and defensive mod slot, so you can still get the same amount of base weapon damage, but you can be a little bit more tankier. If you switch to the Heligar D pads with the two defensive mod slots, then you can further your armor all the way up to 400k, but then you're going to lose around, if you have the same amount of mods that I have, uh, this particular one, 5.5% weapon damage. So you're still putting out plenty of weapon damage, but then you can you know increase your armor and your survivability up to 400, depending on your personal preference and how you like uh, to play and your play style. So starting first with the one piece of Hilligar that gives you 5% total armor. The second piece gives you 20% 20 hazard protection. This chest piece has 15.5% total armor, 14.5% weapon damage with 25,816 health. Now, in a perfect world, I wouldn't have to put that 14.5% weapon damage on it. And then I could roll a number value in place of that health as far as when it comes to armor. And that would definitely increase my survivability exponentially. And we went with Bloodsucker, depleting an enemy's armor as a stack of 25% bonus armor for 10 seconds. Max stack is 6, works out really well for uh, PvE, because especially when you rip off the armor of purples or golds, um, then that's going to increase your survivability in that in itself. Then it has two defensive and an offensive mod slot. In the defensive first one, we have 5128 armor, 3% total armor, 4% explosive resistance. In the offensive mod slot, we have... 5.5% uh, LMG damage. In the defensive mod slot, we have 39.11 armor, 3.5% total armor, and then 4% explosive resistance. On to the backpack. And the reason why I chose this more or less, this back, particular backpack, it already had 13.5% total armor, a little mediocre 7,476, and of course it had hard hitting and spark. Now if it had uh, hardened and in place of hard hitting, then that would also further increase uh, my survivability and my armor. But also that frees up by having the hard hitting on your backpack. That frees you up basically to have any other kind of talent you want on your mask. So if you don't like concussion, you want to go with insulated to have a little bit more hazard protection, you can do that. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. 
And then we put 11% weapon damage on it. Of course, we have Spark Proct, that's his damaging enemies with skills or explosives, grant 15% weapon damage for 15 seconds. And it has a defensive and offensive mod slot. We're getting 6% LMG damage in the offensive mod slot. The defensive, 39-45 armor, 3% explosive resistance, and then 4% total armor. Now on to the True Patriot pieces. In the gloves, for having those two pieces, you get 10% total armor. And then uh, as the attribute, 11% LMG damage with 15,219 health. And of course, another 6% LMG damage in our gloves. So a total of 17% weapon damage just on our gloves. And then up here, we are getting close to 16.5 to 17% weapon damage on our backpack as well. And then that chest piece that we just had went over, we're getting 14.5 plus another 5.5. So 20% weapon damage on our chest piece. So that is where basically our damage is coming from. Now the second piece of True Patriot, I typically use this particular uh, holster in conjunction instead of a blue and a red with a yellow and a red, just so I can get my skill power up. But as you can see, and I'll show you, you can achieve a good amount of healing from your healer Pokeball with uh, only that one particular mod in it. Then you can also further increase your skill haze to drop that down, but you're still getting 14,212 uh, as far as by a Poke heal. Now, if you want to go with uh, more skill power on a mask like I am desperately trying to find, then that would achieve me around 1,900 skill power, so that way that would increase my heal on my pokey heal up to around 22k which makes it a lot better and that is pv uh p stats now when it comes to the pve size since this is a pve build that pushes actually my healing up to around 40k per little squirt from my pokey heal so it works out really nicely but in the two offensive mod slots we are getting six and a half percent on one mod and another six percent lmg damage on another for a total of 12 and a half percent weapon damage just on our holster alone. Now on to that mask. One piece Petrop gives you that 10% LMG damage. Um, this piece drop of 197 skill power, 55% damage to elites, and then 4% crit chance. Um, you know, uh, if that was anything other than crit chance, if it was, let's say, uh, damage to elites on its own, then that would allow me to put on hazard protection. I know those masks uh, out there are available. It's just a matter of uh, diving through and searching through the RNG guys. It's, for it to actually drop it for you. But this is more or less a placeholder until I find a better one. And just due to the fact that extra damage from concussion, headshots grant 15% headshot damage for two seconds, five seconds with a marksman rifle, requires seven or more. And then my other mask that I tend to use more or less for um, PVE or PVP, like if I wanna switch out backpacks, I could and lose some you know damage uh, as far as my base damage, but I would still uh, have this around the same amount as damage to elites. But this one has 53 versus the 54, but at least I get some additional hazard protection on it. Um, but as you can see, it drops my 11 to 10, and I still want to be uh, available and able to put on like composure on a knee pass to further my damage uh, if I so choose. So that is why also I went with more or less the uh, two reds. Now this one I typically use for PvP, as you can see, 50% hazard protection, only 11% damage to elites and 173, 173 skill power with the 30% hazard protection, which a total for this one piece, 80% hazard protection, and then plus the two piece healer guard that would put you at 100. So that is why I stated it all depends on your personal preference and then what more or less talents you want according to your play style and what's familiar with you know with that play style and how you typically run a build would all depend on your personal preference and what you want to put in those slots now the sidearm protected reload uh, i typically use it's either that or stop drop and roll um, the reload does come in handy um, as far as getting that additional armor while reloading and then of course if i want to finish off npc by switching to my sidearm and then proc preservation killing an enemy repairs 10 percent armor over five seconds I can do that as well. Stop, drop, and roll comes for those uh, status effects while equip rolling removes burning, bleed, and poison status effects. So it just depends on your personal preference and what you want to do. The Pestilence Holster Talent, besides the debuff, while holstered, gain 20% bonus armor for 5 seconds whenever you are affected by blind, bleed, or burning. So definitely that Holster Talent does come in handy. Now when it comes to the MK46, uh, 36.8 then factor in the 15% damage to uh, targets out of cover and that's where we're at at 45k to 55 
to put it right exactly. Now to go over more or less what you would do on an Elite. There we go, finally. Now with MK46, 84K body shots. And then if you ding them in the noggin, 139K. And of course that's gonna proc concussion thereafter. And then as far as on the pestilence side of things, 72K body shots and then 120k headshots so it works out really really nicely in anything and all things pve but it, let's say you want to go with my favorite the rpk that's at 32.1 and then of course we have an infantry mg5 28.1 i just prefer the rpk over the infantry mg5 um, but you can use basically any um, LMG that you want to. I just prefer more or less the Pestilence. And if I want a lot of more sustained damage, then I'll go with this MK46. If I want to go with burst damage, um, then I'll go with the RPK with the 715 RPM. And the reload time of only 3 seconds, which really comes in handy. Especially if you're in a pinch and need to re reload really quickly. Without having to use like the Exotic Holster or Filler Up um, in order to achieve that. But I hope it's been informative. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to show some love to the like button and then smash that sub button if you happen to be new. But this is Relentless. Appreciate you guys tuning in and we'll see you fudging later.